I'm back, sort of. I haven't done one of these kitchen vlogs since this past August. And here it is, the end of January. It's been months, but I've been consumed so much with um, recovering from my recent surgery, which I did a lot of kitchen vlogs about. And I'm still not recovered. It's not going very well, but I'm seeing another doctor in mid-February, about two weeks. And we'll, I'll see if he can solve my problem. What I wanted to talk about today, though, was something completely different, unrelated to my waterworks. I like to call it my waterworks. Someone gave me another sewing machine. <laughs> like I need another one. I already had four. Now I have five. How many? I mean, am I going to get as many sewing machines eventually as I have aprons back there along the back wall? You might be wondering why those are back there. I did a TV show for three seasons here in Santa Barbara, and they saw that wall in one of my test videos, and they said, that blank wall, you got to cover it with something. So I put a bunch of aprons back there. That looks pretty good, you got to admit. Lots of color back there. Okay. Someone gave me a sewing machine. A Singer Stylist Model 457 which let me show you what I've got. So there it is, my Singer Stylist Model 457. It says it over here somewhere. I like these older machines because they're mostly, the really old ones, which I'm going to show you later on, my other machines, they're mostly metal. The top is plastic, and these little spindles that hold the bobbins, I mean the thread spools, they're plastic. This handle over here, this turning handle, that's plastic but other and this bottom case but other than that it's all metal and they weigh a lot they're heavy machines this one I weighed it without the cover on it weighs 22 pounds now compare that to a brother that I bought um, maybe a year ago just to kind of experiment with it and it was on sale I got it through Costco it was a brother XR3 3340 weighs only 12 pounds. This is 22 pounds without the cover on. It's 26 with this cover over it. The other one, 12 pounds. I like these machines because you open it up and I opened this up and oiled all the inside, even though it was serviced by someone I know actually here in Santa Barbara. Um, he serviced it. And I think his label was on there when it was serviced. Um, but anyways, Here's the thing with these old machines. I don't know whether you can see it or not. Maybe if I tilt it forward a little bit. There's a plate missing here, a cover. This is the bobbin case in here. It's where the bobbin goes, right? And the plate is missing. There's a cover missing. And that's where this comes in. Let's see, we got a pair of scissors. Open this up. I ordered this from a company in Ohio, SingerOnline.com. And there's the SingerOnline.com. And there's the plate. This is what goes on there. And I'm going to put that on and show you how it goes on. The thing with these, these covers is if the cover is open and you get up, and you hit it with your leg or you catch it on a piece of your clothing it just pops right off because there's only this piece of spring steel here holding it on so I'm gonna put this on and show you how it goes on and and this is the thing with these older machines this was built in 1969 there are still millions and millions of old singers still in use today and therefore parts are still available this was before the days of planned obsolescence solid machines they last decades one of my machines is is before too long it's going to be coming up on 100 years old and it still works and i still use it I'll, again i'm going to show you my other machines in a bit i'll show you pictures of them um, but i'm going to put my my cover on there and i'm going to show you how to do it the reason why it's not here probably because they knocked it off and again it's just this little piece of spring steel here that holds it in place and they probably couldn't figure out how to put it back on because it is tricky 
I'm going to show you how to do that. So I'm going to raise the presser foot. And I have to get a screwdriver and take this off. And then um, I'm going to take the needle out so it'll be easier to work in this area. Okay, I'm going to explain this to you right here. You probably can't see it very well because it's dark. But this is that piece of spring steel that holds this plate in place. There's a little tab on either end and to put it on you have to just lift those up a little bit. You don't want to bend them up much because you don't want to bend the steel, the spring steel. But here's the trick. You have to start from the back. You can't put it on from the front. It has to come on from the back. You get it into place and then lifting up that little spring steel tab Get it into one groove and then another. There's grooves on the underside of this plate on either side. And then working it forward. That's it. It's that simple. There's the plate. Again, if you hit this with your knee or with clothing, you could pop that right off. You can't get it on from the front. And that's probably why they never put it back on. They couldn't figure out how to put it back. But put it in from the back it goes right in now this machine is complete and I can give this away so there it is this machine is ready to give away and the reason why I want to give this away I have a friend in mind she came to me a while back several months ago wanting to borrow one of my sewing machines because she was working on a Halloween costume and she needed to do some sewing she didn't have a sewing machine perfect person to give this to. The only problem is <laughs> she's up in Seattle now. Her and her boyfriend live up in Seattle. They've moved all over the place, but her sons still live in this town. So I'm going to write to her and say, if you're ever in this town, contact me and I've got a sewing machine for you. It's fixed up. It's ready to use. It's oiled. It works fine. I tested this. It does work fine. It's a great machine and it's it's a great machine because it's all steel inside. There's no plastic. One piece that did come with this, that I was, that, this amused me a little bit. It's another one of these, I don't know whether you call it a throat plate or what. The teeth go up through these grooves. And the teeth here, the feed dog, the feed teeth, it's what feeds the fabric through the machine, right? They go up and down and they, they feed fabric through the machine. This is raised to hold the fabric above the teeth so that it doesn't affect the fabric. And the idea behind this is you can put this on if you don't want your fabric to move, such as when you're zigzagging a button into place. You can use the zigzag on this to sew buttons onto a garment with a plate like this. On the newer machines, there's usually a lever in the back that you can lower those teeth. But for this one, they provide this plate. So this machine now is, is ready to give away. Now, if you're interested, um, during the remainder of this video, I'm going to talk about some of my other machines and I'll show you what I've got. Okay, I wanted to uh, show you some of my older machines. And some that are not so old. Okay, first of all, this was my very first machine. This is a Singer 15 Dash or 15 hyphen. That's the model number. This was built in 19. 55 and it's a heavy machine because there's no plastic no plastic anywhere on the machine it weighs 29 pounds without the cover on i use it without a cover and it works fine and i use this machine for many many years to make shirts that's one of my this is one of my homemade shirts this i call it a remnant shirt because it was made with from pieces of fabric left over from other, making other shirts i make these shirts because you can't buy colorful shirts. And in my cooking videos and my kitchen vlog, I want to wear a nice shirt. I don't want to wear gray, blue, brown. And that's pretty much the only colors that are available out there, navy blue. So I want colorful shirts. So that's my 15 Dash, my Singer Model 15 Dash. This is a new one that I got just uh, to experiment with. It was cheap, it was on sale. Uh, reduced price from Costco. This is a Brother XR3340. And just to compare this to the other ones, 
that model 15 dash 29 pounds this one is only 12 pounds less than half the weight of that other machine and the other machine doesn't even have its covers on so these are the days of planned obsolescence they build these machines in fact i talked to someone who services machines and he looked at this and he said well it's not going to last very long and i told him i know but i've got other machines so i don't need the brother was just to experiment with again it was cheap i like how it does button holes i can use it to sew on buttons and i've, I've made shirts on i think i may, might have made this shirt on it and this is my real nice baby this is my singer model 31-15 this is an industrial sewing machine and how i got this was i worked for it the school here the university the um, theater department needed a costumer during the summer but they said we don't have money in the budget right now to pay you the new budget begins july 1st if you can work now we have to build some shows for summer rep repertory and we'll pay you later on and i said well i know you've got an industrial singer upstairs in one of those dressing rooms that no one ever uses it's sitting up there under a cover i'll work for that machine they said it's yours take it home it wasn't even on any inventory it's an old machine this, this machine was built in 1942 and i don't know what it weighs because it's the head it's the table there's a one-third horsepower motor under the table the metal legs to the table it, it's 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 a big heavy machine in fact i recently brought it down to a service a sewing machine service place just to have the belt put on it and it took two people to help me to get it back into my truck it weighs so much and that was taking the head off just to get the the table into my car so then i also have a juki overlock this is my juki overlock i bought this from a friend um, many many years ago and i just used it for knits i don't use this very much but it's handy when you're working with knit fabrics or you want to overlock the edge of fabrics so that they don't fray uh, she gave me it at such a good price. I thought, eh, I'll buy it just to have it. Um, but, you know, that makes five machines I have now. I did email, by the way, during the break. I emailed my friend up in Seattle and told her, if you're going to be down here visiting your sons, because your sons live in town, you're welcome to have this machine if you want it. And if she doesn't want it, I can find someone to adopt it. Anyways, that's my kitchen blog or kitchen vlog for today i haven't done one of these in a long time i'm not even using my teleprompter i'm doing this ad lib i guess um and therefore it's probably a little bit rough but hey i'm a little bit rough it's 71 years old i have nothing to brag about so um, be well and um, stay safe <laughs>